I think we got three or four people severely injured. I don't know how they get on board. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. We all know the story of the sinking of the Titanic in 1912. Though not a container ship, it remains one of the most well-known maritime disasters in history. The history of container ship sinking can be traced back to the early days of maritime trade. In recent years, notable container ship sinkings include the MSC Napoli in 2007 off the coast of England. Salvage efforts were initiated to prevent the vessel from sinking entirely. However, due to the vessel's deteriorating condition, it was decided to intentionally beach the Napoli near Branscombe, Devon. Another notable incident includes the sinking of Express Pearl. The container ship caught fire off the coast of Sri Lanka on May 20th, 2021. The fire broke out due to a chemical leak from one of the containers on board. Despite firefighting efforts, the blaze spread and intensified, leading to the vessel's eventual sinking on June 2, 2021. To minimize the risk of sinking, Container shipping companies conduct regular theoretical training on board. While these training sessions provide crews with essential knowledge, they lack experience in real life situations. A reason why Maersk developed its onshore training center. The training aims to ensure that the crew can respond swiftly and efficiently to fires. The facility is equipped to simulate actual fire drills, mirroring real-life scenarios encountered on board. It covers various aspects such as rapid response strategies, effective utilization of firefighting equipment, evacuation procedures, and precise communication protocols. Multiple scenarios can be created with the aim of strengthening situational awareness and instilling confidence when facing an actual fire incident. They are now facing the risk of not only fire, but also water. The deployment of lifeboats is a core focus. With instruction on properly using these boats and jumping techniques. Additionally, Maersk conducts safety refresher training. This is done to enhance seafarers' emergency response capabilities. As container shipping companies prioritize safety measures, the importance of reliable evacuation methods becomes apparent. Inflatable lifeboats play a vital role in such emergency events.
These lightweight and portable vessels are designed to provide a safe means of evacuation. With their rapid deployment capabilities, they enable quick evacuation of personnel. Inflatable lifeboats are constructed using durable materials and feature self-riding mechanisms to ensure stability in rough sea conditions. They are equipped with essential safety equipment, such as life jackets and emergency supplies. When at sea, the crew can be rapidly transferred on shore using advanced rescue boats. Inflatable rescue boats, for instance, allow a swift response thanks to their powerful outboard motor. Delivering impressive speed and maneuverability. With high pressure inflatable tubes and a reinforced hull, the boat provides remarkable stability and buoyancy. Smith Salvage is among the most well-known companies for their expertise in rescuing the world's largest ships. Salvage operations are usually conducted in partnership with specialized salvage companies using specialized equipment. The refloating of the Blue Star is one notable example. Smith Salvage swiftly deployed its expertise to refloat the ship. The team first pumped out 100,000 tons of hydrocarbon to mitigate environmental risk and lighten the weight of the vessel. Then, two Biscalis salvage tugs were mobilized to maneuver the tanker. With a bollard pull of 460 plus tons, Smith Salvage successfully refloated the vessel. In 2012, the Jacka platform SCP Orion sank after it experienced a punch-through incident in São Luís, Brazil. In the event of a sinking, a wreck removal operation must be conducted to preserve marine life. To tackle this challenge, the salvage company deployed its TacLift 4 floating shear leg. The ship has a lifting capacity of up to 2,400 metric tons. Its towering crane boom and robust structure enabled the precise and controlled lifting of heavy components from the damaged platform. TAC Lift 4's capabilities in maneuvering and stability allowed for effective salvage efforts in Sao Luis. Idle iron is another type of standard salvage operation. This operation entails the decommissioning and removing offshore drilling and production rings for oil and gas. This process is necessary to restore the site, minimize environmental risks, and mitigate safety hazards. To fulfill this task, an enormous double crane is usually used. The Versabar 10,000, the largest heavy lift vessel ever constructed in the United States. The structure comprises two trusses, 
each approximately 240 feet tall, connected to a barge. These barges are nearly 300 feet long, 72 feet wide, and equipped with 4,000 horsepower engines. In September 2019, the Autoliner Golden Ray MV capsized near the port of Brunswick, Georgia, USA. The incident was caused by a loss of stability during a turn, leading to the ship's grounding and subsequent capsizing. The salvage operation involved the removal of the wrecked vessel to restore navigational safety in the area. Golden Ray weighed approximately 71,000 gross tons and was 656 feet in length. It was a complex task that required careful planning and specialized equipment. The initial phase involved stabilizing the ship and constructing a coffer dam around it to prevent any potential pollution. The moment that we got the call for the Golden Ray, I was actually on duty. We heard that 25 people were in the water and that was pretty much the only information that we had. Okay, and bring a swimmer survivor inside the cabin. Roger. After freeing up the 24 crew members, the salvage operation began. The plan involved dismantling the wreckage into eight enormous pieces, weighing up to 4,500 tons. Considering the immense size of the car carrier, the Versabar 10,000 was the perfect equipment for the task. Before commencing the dismantling process, the salvers took the precautionary step of emptying the ship's 24 tanks. Those contained approximately 250,000 gallons of fuel. The auto liner was then cut using a massive diamond cutting chain suspended from the VB-10,000. Once lifted from the water, each section was carefully placed onto a barge. Transporting them to the shore for scrapping. Several brand new Kia and Hyundai, Chevrolet, GMC, GM, Mercedes-Benz, and Ram were still inside. A mobile crane was then used to extract the vehicles. Marine salvage operations face increasingly challenging tasks. These operations require meticulous planning, skilled professionals, and collaborative efforts to mitigate risks and restore marine ecosystems successfully. Hence, developing specialized vessels, advanced cutting techniques, and environmental considerations have become crucial. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.